Hi everyone, welcome to the Wednesday edition of Source 16 News. I'm Eddie Owen. Thanks for joining us. A Todd County teen is set to go on trial this summer for allegedly murdering his adoptive sister and biological cousin, nine-year-old Amy Dye. 17-year-old Garrett Dye appeared this morning before Judge Tyler Gill at the Todd County Courthouse in Elkton alongside his lawyer, Dennis Ritchie of Hopkinsville. Dye's trial will begin July 25th, but he will have to undergo a mental evaluation at the Kentucky Correctional Psychiatric Center before his trial. Dye pled not guilty in February to allegedly murdering his adoptive sister and biological cousin. Dye is charged in the death of nine-year-old Amy Dye when he reportedly hit her in the head multiple times with a hydraulic jack handle on February 4th. An autopsy revealed that Amy died of multiple blunt force trauma. Last month, a Todd County grand jury indicted Garrett on adult charges of murder, resisting arrest, and tampering with physical evidence. Court records show the 17-year-old has a substantial history of run-ins with the law, which is one reason a judge ruled that he would be tried as an adult. Di remains in the Warren County Detention Center in Bowling Green. A Fort Campbell soldier charged with butchering his wife's dog last year had his bond amount reduced in Christian County Circuit Court this morning. Judge John Atkins reduced the bond of 42-year-old Mark Staley of Denzel Drive from $5,000 to $1,000. When asked whether or not he could post bail, Staley told Atkins that he could not afford it because the Army froze his military pay. Assistant Commonwealth Attorney Whitney Westerfield replied that he felt no matter, no matter what the bond amount is, Staley would say he couldn't post it. Judge Atkins gave Staley 10 days to post his bail, and if he did, he would be released into the custody of Army officials, who will likely make arrangements for him to get inpatient treatment at Cumberland Hall. However, the judge also told Staley that if in 10 days he could not make his bail, he would review his case again. Atkins also set a Wednesday morning, May 11th, pretrial conference for Staley. After his hearing, Staley's wife declined an on-camera interview but told Source 16 News that she believes her husband should be let out of jail because he was recently diagnosed with five different mental disorders and that he should get help for his mental illnesses. A man convicted in the 2007 murder of a Benton woman will go on trial again this fall. During a pretrial conference in Marshall County yesterday, court records indicate George Luna's retrial was supported, reportedly set to begin September 19th. Luna allegedly killed 46-year-old Deborah Hendrickson and set her home on fire with her body inside. A jury convicted Luna in 2008 for murder and arson, but the Kentucky Supreme Court ruled there were legal errors during the trial and they vacated the verdict. The son and stepson of a former Fort Campbell soldier charged in a double murder took to the witness stand yesterday during the soldier's fourth trial. Brent Burke is accused of fatally shooting his estranged wife, Tracy, and her former mother-in-law, Karen Comer, in Comer's Rineville home in September 2007. During the trial Tuesday, Burke's son and stepson reportedly told the court Burke is the killer. In addition, the soldier's son, who is now eight years old, testified his dad shot his mother. According to prosecutors, the couple's three children were inside the home when the murders took place. Burke has pled not guilty to murder, burglary, wanton endangerment, and animal cruelty, and has had three previous trials end with mistrials. Well, the Christian County High School basketball team was honored today at the state capitol in Frankfort. Third District State Senator Joey Pendleton of Hopkinsville honored the Colonels on the floor of the State Senate for winning the 2011 PNC Bank Kentucky High School Athletic Association Boys Sweet 16 Basketball Tournament. Pendleton said it's an honor to have the Colonels in Frankfurt today to recognize the accomplishments of this outstanding group of young men who exemplify the best in dedication and teamwork. He went on to say this team will forever be remembered in the storied annals of Kentucky high school basketball history. A Murray State University student has been arrested for drug trafficking after a lengthy investigation by Kentucky State Police and the Penny Ryle Narcotics Task Force into the alleged trafficking of large amounts of marijuana on the campus. 22-year-old Kenneth Flintroy Jr. of Louisville was arrested by state police 
and charged with three counts of trafficking in a controlled substance within 1,000 yards of a school and three counts of possession of drug paraphernalia after officers witnessed him selling several ounces of marijuana to another student in a parking lot near Richmond Hall Tuesday. According to police, during a search, officers seized a large amount of marijuana and drug paraphernalia from his dorm room and a vehicle used in the commission of the crimes. Flintroy was charged in the was lodged in the Callaway County Jail. A Madisonville man is in serious condition today at an Indiana hospital after he crashed into a track hoe Tuesday. According to Hopkins County Sheriff Frank Latham, the accident occurred on McLeod Lane at the intersection of Forest Acres Drive, which is closed due to construction of a sewer system in the subdivision. The sheriff reports that 30-year-old Christopher Manley was driving a 1993 Isuzu Trooper south on Forest Acres Drive when he apparently did not see a road closed sign and hit a track hoe owned by Ernie Davis and Sons Mechanical Incorporated out of Owensboro. Manley was extricated from his vehicle by the Grapevine Volunteer Fire Department and treated at the scene by Med Center ambulance personnel. He was then flown to St. Mary's Medical Center in Evansville, where he is listed in serious condition. A Madisonville disposal garbage truck was damaged by fire this morning. Madisonville Fire Department Chief Stephen Stoltz reports that crews responded to the parking lot of 1771 South Main Street off US 41 Hopkinsville Road around 6 o'clock, where they found a garbage truck on fire. Chief Stoltz said the driver of the truck dumped his load in the parking lot to allow fire crews to gain access to the burning refuse and to attack the fire. According to the report, the garbage truck had paint damage due to the blaze. The chief said the scene was turned over to the refuse company for cleanup. The Tennessee Valley Authority is looking for public comments from Pembroke and Oak Grove residents regarding a transmission line project that will relieve overloaded equipment and help assure continued reliable power for a portion of western Kentucky. The proposed improvements include constructing about 5 miles of 161 kilovolt transmission line to Penny Ryle Rural Electric Cooperative Corporation's new Salem Church substation. The line would extend west from the existing Edgeton Caskey 161 kilovolt transmission line toward Highway 41 to the proposed substation on Elmo Road. TVA is considering several alternate alternative routes for the line from a network of 12 possible line segments. There will be an open house on the proposed improvements and for public comments tomorrow afternoon from 3 until 7 at the Pembroke Elementary School Gymnasium at 1600 Pembroke Oak Grove Road. Well, the changes continue to roll out in Mayfield. The city recently promoted former Mayfield Corporal and canine handler Brent Farmer to Detective Lieutenant in the Investigations Unit. Farmer had been with the Mayfield Police Department since 1999 and has been with the Investigations Unit for about nine years. Mayfield Mayor Teresa Cantrell said the city is working to combat their drug problem and will be announcing more changes within the department soon. Kentucky now has three more new laws after Governor Steve Bashir today signed legislation banning synthetic drugs and laws to protect at-risk seniors. The law banning new synthetic drugs includes drugs that mimic the effects of ecstasy and methamphetamine and are commonly marketed as bath salts or plant food to disguise their actual purpose. Under House Bill 121, sponsored by State Representative John Tilley of Hopkinsville, manufacturing or trafficking in the substance is a Class A misdemeanor and possession is a Class B misdemeanor. A similar ban on synthetic marijuana, also called spice or K2, became law last year. The governor also signed into legislation today two laws aimed at better protecting adults and seniors from abuse and exploitation. House Bill 52 prevents people who abuse or neglect vulnerable or elderly adults from benefits from their deaths and bars people convicted of felony abuse or exploitation of an adult from serving as that victim's guardian, executor, or power of attorney. The bill also establishes a trust fund to provide funding for programs combating elder and vulnerable adult abuse. House Bill 164 will make it easier and more efficient for adults and seniors needing a guardian when more than one state is involved.
Well, Hopkinsville's A.W. Watts Senior Center has fallen on tough financial times, and Christian County officials are hoping that area residents will come to the organization's aid. According to Christian County Judge Executive Steve Tribble, programs like Meals on Wheels are in jeopardy due to the organization's financial troubles. Tribble says the Meals on Wheels program is a lifesaver for area senior citizens. There are a lot of folks out there with uh, low income levels and uh, some of them are shut in, you know, and they're, they're at home and they, a lot of times this meal that's delivered to their home is maybe the only meal they get uh, the day, you know, and I've heard that some of them maybe would take this meal and like eat a portion of it like for maybe lunch and then save it and heat it up and eat the rest of it, you know, for the evening meal. And uh, I mean, it's a, it's a meal that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a wholesome meal. It's got the, the daily, uh, you know, dietary requirements or whatever. And it's, it's really a good meal. And uh, they're just people that are needy in our community. So we want to be sure that, don't, that people are not suffering any more than necessary. To help keep the Meals on Wheels program operational, officials will be hosting a Bucket Brigade fundraiser April 2nd. Volunteers will be collecting donations in the areas of Country Club and Canton Pike, Country Club and Lafayette Road, and North Drive and 7th Street. If you would like to help the A.W. Watts Senior Center, contact the organization at 270-886-8885. Well now, here's the Hopkinsville Christian County Crime Stoppers coordinator, Paul Ray. It's our featured Fugitives of the Week. This week, Hopkinsville police need your help locating two wanted fugitives. Police are looking for 42-year-old James Edward Priest, who's wanted for probation violation. Priest is a white male who stands 5 feet, 10 inches tall, and weighs 190 pounds. His last known address was the 200 block of East 16th Street. Police are also looking for 44-year-old Marlon Quinn Alexander, who's wanted for probation violation. Alexander is a black male who stands 5 feet, 5 inches tall, and weighs 160 pounds. His last known address was the 300 block of West Edmond Street. If you know where police can locate these wanted fugitives, and we've got cash waiting for you. Pick up your phone now and call our tips line at 887-TIPS. If your information leads to an arrest, Crime Stoppers will pay you a cash reward. And remember, we will never ask your name, and you will not have to appear in court. Well, this week's Fugitive of the Week, I'm Officer Paul Ray for Crime Stoppers. And tonight's Powerball jackpot is $101 million. Friday's Mega Millions jackpot, $304 million.